Now, you said you went through a really, really bad depression. Both of us, man. It was yeah. just, um, I, but I, you know, the one thing, I, I, I always say this in every interview when they ask me about that, that, that period of time. I tell people that I always foresaw the military train stop. I always saw that happening, hitting the wall, boom, stand still. It's like when you're in a fight, you know? When someone is about to punch, you're like, Ugh. you flex, right? So when the punch comes, you're good. <laughs> but when the punch comes, by surprise, you're knocked out. You don't see it coming. Yeah. And with Rob, he didn't see it coming. We were pushing, you know, we wanted to get out, but he didn't think that it would affect him like that, that it would take everything away. I had a feeling that our life would be totally, it would be night and day. But he thought maybe because of everything that we were working on, the world tour was coming, we we're trying to work a new situation as far as Rob and Fab singing on a record with another team of producers. But when he hit him, it hit him hard. So he went, I kind of like, I was in the process of stopping everything. I was like, yo, I got to stop the drug part because if I don't do that, the edge is very close and I won't be able to get back up. So I got to stop. So I had that going. But he went just to okay. forget because it was painful. Sure. Because then, then after that, it seemed like people try to sort of pick up the pieces. I guess um, the original vocal vocalists try to come out with a group called The Real Milli Vanilli. Well, that was done by Frank. Oh, Frank. Frank was behind that whole thing. Frank tried to put out the real Millie yeah, Vanilli? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Took them on the road. They, they, <laughs> they released an album. They went on the road in various territories. Yeah. You guys came out as Robin Fab. Yes. And that, was, that situation was, uh, you know, we had a manager at the time. He was German. Who thought he could handle this thing and take it further. And he got us in a situation with, uh, with this independent label that had no power. That didn't have, they didn't have the money to print records mm. once we did the record. And that's when my new manager came in, Kimalo, and she was trying to fix that whole thing. But we were already signed. So it was like, okay, right. let's do this. Let's release one single. Let's get a video done and let's get it done. You know? But we finished this project. And it came out and it sold 2,000 copies. Because there was no records right. in the store. Qu quite a difference from the, the 30 million that you guys yeah, were just used man. to. Yeah, it man. Was, it was a brand new... It's like, you know, you have those new glasses on. Yeah. And the world looks very different now. And, and, but you guys are doing your own vocals at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually did some, did some, some, some touring, some club tours, and here and there to let people know this is the new project, this is the new music. Right, you guys went on Arsenio, I think, and Well, performed. Arsenio, what, what Arsenio did, he did a countdown, the one month countdown, countdown, and you know, Milvi, you know, Rob and Fab are going to perform, and we did it, and we killed it. Anybody can go back and look at that performance, I killed it, I can say that. And, yeah. and, and guests that came after that were like, yo, Fab did his thing. Rob wasn't there. You know, during the whole process of the record, he had, you know, this drug addiction that kicked in in overdrive. So he was kind of like, now it was, it was deep. And he was trying to get out of it. He was fighting it, but it was very difficult because the pain, he really got, you know, he couldn't recover from the punch. Well, Rob at one point said that he felt like you guys sold your souls to the devil. Well, you know, we kind of, we kind of did. Yeah. Really, you know, we not realizing what we were doing, you know? If someone would have told me, you know, like, you know, in the night, yo, we can rewind. Let's rewind this. I'd be like, with everything I know now, let's go back. Dope. <laughs> let's go back to the beginning. But that was impossible. Well, but I think, I don't know if it was you or Rob that said that even if you could rewind it, you might still do it all over again. No? No, man. No? No, man. To go through that? That's crazy. I mean, you went through that, but then also the heights of it. Yeah, but no, man. That's no. painful, man. Okay. That's painful, too. No, I, the only thing I would change out of that 
would be sing on the record and get Rob out of that drug habits. Okay. That would be like the ultimate. So after you guys put out your own project, the, the Robin Fab project, you are starting to sober up. Rob is in a bad in a bad state still. Yeah. How is your relationship with Rob? Are you guys still like brothers or Listen, is it? We're, we're, we're brothers to the end. And I told him, look, you got to clean up, dude. Okay. Because if you want to go back to work, because we went through Rob and Fab and I pretty much did every tracks on the record because he wasn't there. He couldn't, you know, deal with it. And it was just too hard. He, he, was, he had gone so deep. It was very difficult to get out of that. And we tried as a team with my manager, Kimalo, to, to help him work, walk on this path of recovery. But with addiction, if you ain't ready yourself, if you ain't ready to do it, nobody can do it for you. Well, Rob not only was doing drugs, but he started doing crime. Well, the, the crime happened because of the fact that he wasn't there. You know, he wasn't there anymore, so he was doing things like, you know, he was high there, so he would get arrested. Right. He had, he had an assault? He had an assault. Well, what happened was, I think he, he was high, got into someone's car. I don't, really, I, I don't know. I don't know if he broke in or the door was open, so he went in there, slept in there. And then the dude was like, the hell is that in my car? So opened the door, Rob jumped up and then ran, and then ran into his house. To, it was a crazy story. There was robberies that he was involved in? Nah, man. No, okay. No. no. Not that I know of. Not that you know of. But he had to go into rehab at one point. Well, he, he, had, he had to do three months in jail. He well, went to he, jail. He, he did rehab. He did a few. Did know, a few we rehab. did, I did too. You know, okay, we you did, did rehab a few, as well. You know, and, yeah, but but he, he had jail time also. Yeah. Like three months. Not a huge he, amount, but not still. Not much. So. And I getting, thought, and I hoped. Yo, it's gonna be good. You do some time, maybe like things are gonna change. Frank comes back. Yeah. And starts to work with Rob. Yeah. Starts to work on his music. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have you read between the lines. Okay. Why and how? You know. Because Frank came to help out with the situation, you know, with the crime situation. Yeah. Got him out of it, you know. Paid. But you know, you don't get nothing for nothing. Did Frank, were you talking to Frank at all during this time? Hell no. At all. My manager, Kimalo, was in, in, in touch with the person that, that, that was working for Frank. Frank never spoke to me directly. Really? Know? No, yeah. man. No, we, we, back then we did. Yeah. But when everything went down, it was like, okay. yo, no more. Do you feel that Frank came back because of guilt over the whole thing? Or? Hell no. No, because man. Frank ultimately listen, made it's about, listen, it's a about, lot of millions of dollars. It's about that. It's about that paper, man. Well, that's it for him. I mean, to be fair, I'm just gonna, you know, as a as a third party here. Do it, do it. I mean, because Frank went on to continue to produce music, and he was successful, and everything else like that, right? Yeah. So. If Frank never worked with you guys again, he would have been okay. Frank, the, the only reason Frank came back into Rob's life and tried to get into my life again was to do the same thing over again. Okay. But how can you do the same thing over again when the cat's already out the bag? I don't know. But he, he, that, he, he, I stayed away from that situation. My manager, Kamala, was, was talking to them. And when I heard that, yo, he wants me to to get back to Germany and I was like, I ain't doing nothing. So you were done with it? I was done with it. But Rob wasn't. Rob entertained it. Listen. He was rock bottom. Rob needed some money. Yeah. You know, and the hand that fed you comes back and be like, yo, here's some paper. You know, what you gonna do? If you're in, 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 in Rob's shoes and you got problem, you got drug addiction to go through and, and you want to you wanna get better, but you, you know, you're in a different place, like, yeah. what you going to do? Now, before this happened, before uh, Frank came back, Rob had multiple suicide attempts. Well, 
one of them was really a cry for help. Well, he, he slid his wrists at one point. Mm, no? That never no, happened? No. Okay. That I, I haven't heard you, about. You, that you, you didn't hear the about one that. I heard about, well, you know, we were, you know, he it just, he was at, um, at the Mondrian and it was just, you know, desperation. He had threatened to jump from a nine-story yeah, yeah, window. Yeah, yeah, you heard about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Now, we were together at that time, but he, he went to party, he went to the Mondrian and just like went on a rampage. He was clean. And then once he started to mess around with it again, it was like, yo, I know something bad was going to happen. I didn't know where he was. So Rob tried to commit suicide by jumping off a nine-story window. Yeah. And uh, what, people, were you with him at the time? No, I wasn't. I, actually, I was with him before, like in, uh, we were part, I don't know what we were doing. And then he went on his own because we were not living together anymore. You know, it was like, we've got to clean up, my dude. I'm trying to clean up. So if I'm going to be around you, I ain't going to clean up. And so we had to like separate. Okay. And um, it's one of those nights. He did too much and he started to replay everything. You know, when you start to replay everything, it's just, and the jokes were so cold too, you know, like, we were just nothing but a joke then, you know, they didn't have like, like we, people don't realize that when you are this, this celebrity, you know, like, you know, you're the star, but they forget that you have also have, you're not a machine, you're, yeah. you have feelings, you're just yeah. a, you're a, a person. Yeah, you're a yeah. person. You're a person that's been, you know, kicked up to the, to the forefront, you know, and you, yeah, you're on TV, you're on radio, you're everywhere and everything, you know, you're famous. But you're a human being, and um, when they, when they charge, man, they charge hard, and it's hard to to walk down the street without. It was hard to 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 feel at ease anywhere because right. it felt like people were laughing. So if I was in a place chilling, and I would hear people laugh, I'd be like, mm. they are they laughing at me? Is that me? Like, oh, right? Because you said you for a while you never even left your house unless it was. To I go stayed eat. in my house for a long time. Years. Years. Wow. Like coming out, like to go shopping at night, late, and go to the store. Like you know, I know there's not gonna be nobody, but still, people are like, hey, you know, and that that encounter alone, like, I ain't coming out, I ain't coming out next time. Yeah. Next time, somebody else can go and get the, the groceries. It's tough. So then, in 1998, Rob ends up dying. Yup. So he ended up overdosing on pills and alcohol, but but people were saying that it was a, a suicide. I personally don't think so, and that's another part of the story that um, that I still have to investigate. My dude was on his way to uh, to uh, India to sober up 100%, and he was in a program in Germany that was paid, I think, by Frank because Frank was courting Rob to do whatever it was they wanted, he wanted to do, and um, for some reason, man. The day of his departure, my dude partied his heart out. So that makes no sense to me. You're about to sober up, but you know, in the mind of an addict, nothing is really clear until you're out of the tunnel. So maybe just like back in the days, we were like, yo, we're gonna stop for one week. So we go cold turkey, one week, nothing. But the week after, it's like, man, double up, bro, double up. So, you know, maybe it's one of those, like, I'm going to do one last time. I'm going to get high. Oh, because I'm about to go into rehab. I'm about to go clean up 100%. Mm. So I'm going to go hard. So maybe with the medicine that he was on and what it took, the heart just said, no more. Right, because he was only 33 years old. Yep. And you know, it's funny because... Back in the days, we were young, we were like, when everything was heavy, we were like, yo, man, it would be okay to just, you know, check out. You know, young forever. Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, it's young forever, man. He's like, yeah, man. And I was like, I don't know, man. But he was like, yeah, man, fuck, mm, whatever. I was like, I don't know. I, I, I still think that I want to I wanna go further here. I think there is more to do. I mean, 33, you're still a baby at this oh, point. Oh, man, you, you've I mean, got you're, so you're, much. You're how old at this point? I'm 50. Yeah, yeah. He missed out on, and he, you guys were the same age, right? He was older. By 
Two years. Two years. Right. Yeah. So you were 31. So he was my big brother. Mm. You know, growing up together, you know, it's a big difference. Two years at that yeah. age makes a big difference. So he was, he was my, okay, he was the big brother, pretty much. But eventually, when we grew up, then I, I became the big brother. And I tried and tried and tried and tried so many times to, to, have, him, to have him see the light. But he couldn't see it. As much love that I gave him, you know, brotherly love. My dude, I love you. But listen, you got to get out of there because, you know, this is, it can only end, there's only a few scenarios. You know, it's, it's jail, it's cemetery, it's the hospital. And all those avenues, it ain't pretty. But still, and, and he was adopted. And I believe that early on, when we met, there was always that, he had that void I could see, you know, because it was, he was adopted. And um, there was something missing, you yeah. know, and becoming celebrities, you know, pop stars, whatever you call it, it was, uh, it was lovely, <laughs> you know. You know, it filled that void. Everybody was loving you, you know. But I grew up, I had my family, even though I came from a divorced background, but I, I feel like I was a little more balanced. Yeah. And he didn't have that. So when everything went off balance, he was just like, wow. It threw him off. When you got the phone call that Rob had passed, yeah. and you were the closest person in his life for... He's the only person that knows what it was like to, to walk in our shoes. Yeah. How, how badly did it hit you when you got that call? Well, Kim Marlowe, my manager, got the call. And then she, she just like lost her stuff on the floor. And then, but as she was crying, she was on the floor, she, I heard what she said before that. And I knew this moment would come. So I you, just knew it would You come. weren't surprised. You're always surprised when it comes. But you knew it was coming. But I knew it was coming. I was hoping that it would never come. But when it came in, it was like, um, I lost my earring for like a good minute. It was like, the ears were ringing. It was just like, oof, it was just intense. You know, losing someone that to care for is, is on the physical level. Psychological is different, but on the physical level, it was just, at that moment in time when you get that news, it was just uh, a rush of adrenaline. You're not moving, but your body is just going through the, the motion. And then after that, it's just pure sadness, loneliness. My bro is gone. And we walked the valley of the darkness together. And I thought that we would get out of the valley together. You know, and then we would see sunshine and we would go not to that mountaintop, but to another. Keep doing what we do because we love music. That's why we got into this game in the first place for the love of music. But he wasn't there anymore and he was not going to, he was not going to have that, that, that precious life because I was, I was doing a lot of work on myself. I was reading a lot of stuff, you know, and I was starting to share that with him as well. And I was telling him, look, man, it's not, you know, the success is not everything, you know. Success is just, it's just a part of like, you know, it's a career thing. You know, you can, you, you have to learn to live without that. And he wasn't down with that. You know, he wanted that life. That life was pretty much everything for him. Because, you know, being loved, even though his motto was, it's better to be feared than to be loved. He loved that love when people acknowledged him and gave him attention, being in the center of attention. He loved that, you know. I loved it too, but I was more of an introvert. I wasn't too down with it. My thing was, you do that. When I hit the stage, I do my thing, you know. And I got, I got with it as, I, as, as we were going through the process. I, I, I grew up as well. But he was two years older, you know, so he was, he was, it was easier for him. And my thing was, from the get-go, you know, music was really what I wanted to do, you know. So when he left the building, 
more than ever, I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this. I'm going to do my project. It was called Love Revolution. I wrote a song for him. And, um, you know, I'm marked forever. You know, those are scars that will never heal. You know, they, yes, they heal, but the fact that he didn't have to go like that, that was not necessary. He should be here and he should have had the chance to just live another life. You know, because I, I look at life as like, you know, it's like a book with various, with different chapters. And through those chapters, you will evolve. You will grow. And if you focus on yourself, and that goes for everybody out there, it's never too late for anything. As long as you, you focus on yourself and you treat yourself like your best friend and you surround yourself with the right people when it comes to... And it, I'm not talking about, you know, music industry. I'm talking as human beings, just living life. I'm all about the dream. Go hard. Life is too short. Give it all you got.